Today's video gives a short introduction on implicit quantile network. Particularly, I will focus on the objective functions and the implementation details. Implicit quantile network, or IQN, is first proposed by Dabney et al. for distributional reinforcement learning. And this tutorial is primarily based on that paper as well. However, to use IQN laws, one doesn't need to have background in RL or Q-learning, because the ultimate goal for IQN is regression. For instance, the IQN objective has also been used for image generation. In this video, I will gradually introduce more and more relevant concepts, starting from what is a quantile, then to quantile regression, finally to IQN as well as its implementations. For ease of exposition, the random variables in our examples are assumed to be continuous. What is quantile? Let x be a continuous random variable with probability density function f and the corresponding cumulative distribution function to be capital F, and let tau be a value between 0 and 1. Then the tau's quantile or percentile of the random variable x is a value at which the CDF equals to tau. In other words, the quantile is the inverse of the cumulative distribution function. A resulting property is that if we integrate the quantile function from 0 to 1 using change of variable formula, we can eventually derive that this equals to the expectation of the random variable x. We will revisit it later on when talking about the inference of IQN. Quantile regression is a method for estimating quantile. Here is a general form of a quantile regression loss. U is the estimation error. It will be positive if we underestimate the quantile, and negative if we overestimate the quantile. And I is an indicator function based on the positivity of U. We define the loss function this way because if we minimize the expectation of rho x minus q over q, then it returns precisely the quantile at, at tau. A simple proof is presented here. Feel free to come back if interested. But for now, let's move on to talk about IQN. An IQN is a deterministic neural network that parametrizes not only the input feature S, but also a quantile threshold tau. It then aims at outputting the quantile of a target distribution X at tau. An IQN loss essentially does the job of a regressor, like the mean squared error, but instead of a fixed scalar target, it minimizes some pod errors for a target distribution x at different quantile threshold taus. For instance, we uniformly draw n samples of taus from the unit interval, and the IQN outputs the quantile at each tau i. The final objective function is the average over all the quantile losses. More often than not, we cannot access the entire target distribution x, but only have in hand a single target scalar. In these cases, we can only utilize what we know, and replace the target quantiles with x as an approximation. I also try to imagine that the target distribution has a delta PDF, where all the mass is centered on the single value x. Another major novelty point in IQN is a modified quantile loss, termed Huber quantile loss. The others claim this formulation leads to better optimization and better final performance. During inference, pick n fixed tiles evenly over the interval 0, 1. Compute the quantile corresponding to each tau. Take the average of them to obtain the final estimation, x. This procedure roughly reflects the property we mentioned earlier, which is 
the expectation of the random variable x equals to the integral of quantile from 0 to 1. Last but not least, a quick walkthrough of how to concretely implement IQN. Give a training example S as an input. Encoded through a neural network phi, leading to a latent embedding space of dimension d. Uniformly draw n tiles from the unit interval. Then encode each tile in the following way. Use cosine embedding to map tau to a d-dimensional vector. Pass the vector z through another single-layer MLP psi to obtain the final embedding of tau. Combine the embedding of s and tau through element-wise multiplication. The product goes through another MLPG to reach the final estimation. A lot of the above design choices are flexible, such as the encodings phi, psi, g, as well as the combination of the embeddings. And that's it. Good luck with your training.